From colorful bricks to actual theme parks, if there is one thing that has traveled a very, very long path, it is Lego. Literally every child in this world is familiar with a Lego set and has every reason to be. It is not just a toy, but something with which you can play with your imagination as well. With a single Lego set, you can create castles, towns, space stations, whatnot. Any busy parent can keep their child engaged and they do not have to have second thoughts about whether they are enjoying themselves or not. But how did these toy bricks come out of nowhere? How did it grow into such a big franchise? Where did it start from? Who came up with such a brilliant idea? Well, if you have all these burning questions, today we are here to answer all of them. So why wait? Grab all those Lego bricks you have and let us hear about how it all started. The name that you need to get familiar with here is Old Kurt Christensen. He was what we could easily say the father of Lego. But before that, he was a pretty well-known carpenter. How well-known exactly? While Kirk's shop offered carpentry work to customers from all over the area, his shop made unique kind of furniture and as we just said, they were quite famous. If someone wanted top quality furniture, they had no choice but to visit this store. His business went amazingly well for around 10 years after which disaster struck and the shop caught fire. Rather than being discouraged, Kirk made a decision to start another wood shop, but this time his goal was to expand it. He wanted to expand his business and also increase his customers and get more jobs. The era we're talking about here was the late 1920s and you know what happened during that time. The global financial crisis knocked on the door. Like most other businessmen at the time, Kirk lost many of his customers. As you can imagine, at some point he ran out of big plans and decided, like any man, to start small and ultimately make it big. He created smaller models of the wood products he created as a design aid. He made miniature versions of ironing boards, ladders, and other household items. Kirk decided to start making toys after seeing how adorable they were. Kirk began experimenting with and creating wooden toys for children around 1932. These were common toys such as trucks, cars, police vehicles, children's banks, etc. After some time, he got back into the business of making furniture, but he did not stop making these toys. He held a public contest for employees to decide on a company name and most settled on the name Lego, which means play well in Danish. After a while, employees at the company that is now known as Lego came to know that the word Lego meant I assemble in Latin, another widely spoken language. Kirk liked this name so much that he finally agreed to use it for all of his products. So did Lego come before the actual Lego toys were made? Pretty much yes. At the end of the Second World War, there was a lot of plastic in Denmark. The first idea was not to dump it away, but rather use them to make other things, as you already guessed, toys for instance. Lego decided to invest in a device known as the Plastic Injection Molding Machine. The first thing that they created using this was a truck. In fact, this truck was probably the founding father of Legos. Parts could be assembled, disassembled, and then put back together. It was the first modular toy created by the company. Kirk and his son Godford chose to take inspiration from other companies that make similar products because the idea was as intriguing as it sounds at the moment. You need to remember that this is around the 1930s that we are talking about, so there were not many such companies that made toys. The idea of modular toys or Lego's older version as we can call it did not actually originate at Lego. Rather, it was brainstorm of a person called Hilary Fisher, a designer at a company called Kittycraft. At that time, Paige was making plastic blocks with studs so that the blocks can be stacked in a single row one over the other. Lego began revising this design, creating cellulose acetate bricks designed to fit together easily. This is how Lego bricks came into the market, which was in 1953. Whenever we talk about how a new product that has immense popularity today actually started, you will notice that people did not like these at first. It was the same with Lego bricks. For the first few years, clients felt that this idea was stupid and even returned the products. This went on until Godford, who, if you remember, is Kirk's son, worked on the town plan using Lego bricks in 1955. This time, they developed bricks that had hollow tubes beneath them, so that the interlocking was much better. As the sales grew, they made the decision to patent the design as any company with a future goal would do. With much newer designs and better materials, LEGO started building its presence throughout the world. But that does not mean that problems did not happen. While the company's profits grew, there were many internal struggles between the family brothers. 
Added to that, they did not have the proper requirements for entering the American market. The solution? They struck a contract with Samsonite, an American company that could produce and distribute LEGO items in the United States. You would be lying if you did not agree with us about the LEGO train system being one of the best series made by the company. Did you know it dates back to as far as 1966? Of course, it was much smaller then and had a 4.5 volt battery box and a small motor. But as they say, you do need to start somewhere. Even Legoland Park, which is such a popular destination today, has been around since 1968. The company came up with it to commemorate their success right where it all started at Billund. Over the years, it has expanded and of course is a favorite destination for any kid who knows about it. But the most interesting question here would be, how has LEGO managed to be so popular for nearly half a century now? After all, there are so many toy companies and brands. Look at Barbie, for instance, who are such big competitors. What is their growth strategy? You think it is some big strategy, but in reality, it is the most practical thing that anyone can come up with. LEGO invests more in the markets, whereas it growing and cuts off supplies in the markets where they face a loss. Just look at a recent instance. LEGO was facing a downfall in the European and American markets during 2017. However, they were extremely popular in the Asian markets and were seeing an exponential rise in their sales there. So they invested more in opening stores across China while reducing the shipping of products to the American and European markets. And as it was expected, the growth strategy paid off and they saw an immediate increase in not just the Asian, but even the global sales the very next year. The takeaway lesson? not to waste resources in an already saturated market. Another important thing which you might have noticed about LEGO is that as a company, they are always familiar with the trends. A company that has existed as long as LEGO has, which is more than 50 years, needs to be familiar with how things are changing and anyone can safely say that LEGO has and is doing a great job. Have you seen their digital presence? They invest heavily into e-commerce to make sure that they are not suppressed by giants like Amazon, Plus, they have online games and events that people can participate in at any time and from anywhere. This adaptability is something that has always kept them in the top charts and getting voted as the best toy company in various countries for years in a row. Until you came across this video, we are sure that you would have thought that LEGO is a company that came into existence maybe just a few years ago. But they have been here for a very, very long time and seeing how they are growing and the quick changes that they make, I think all of us are quite sure about them staying for many more years to come. If you love this video, make sure to hit that like button and do not forget to subscribe to our channel. Do you own a LEGO set? Which one is your favorite? Let us know in the comment section below because we love to hear from you. We will be back very soon.